So, you know, with the stuff that went on lately with HBO Max pulling Gone with the Wind, well, temporarily, it's actually back up now at the time of this recording, um, and it makes me wonder, because I, I forget what it was, something set off my, my memory as to, you know, the fact that Disney still won't release Song of the South and seems to be a lot more scared of its own history of depictions of racial issues or insensitivities or stereotypes. And I found myself wondering, why is Warner Brothers so much better at that than Disney? And I do mean that very narrowly and very specifically. I've been pretty critical of Warner Brothers for various reasons over the years. I can be critical of Disney too. I don't think Disney is on a pedestal. But as a general rule, when it comes to intellectual property management, I think Disney does a better job for the most part than Warner's does. That having been said, when it comes to a comfort with their, with the IP that they have and any history of racial issues with it, Warner Brothers seems to have a much healthier relation with that. So what they did with HBO Max and with Gone with the Wind, which was to temporarily take it off the service, put it back, but to have a segment at the front end that gives context and says, you, you know, you're going to see some things that are depicted in a way that was from a different time, but there are problems with it. Here they are. Now you can enjoy the movie. This is not a new tactic from them. They actually, they've been doing this for decades. Ever since they started put it, putting out compilation DVD collections of old Looney Tunes shorts. Because some of those early shorts, yeah, it's rough. Some of them are real rough when it comes to depictions of race or people from certain areas or things along those lines. But Warner Brothers has never pretended like that didn't happen. They haven't ignored it. They've basically said, yeah, that happened. And here's a little bit to talk about it so that you're not just taking it in blind without some sort of understanding of why it happened then and why it's not okay now. And that's a healthy way to go about it. Disney, by comparison, really wants to pretend that that was never a problem. Disney doesn't talk about the uh, the Indian character. I'm saying Indian because it's the term they use in the movie itself. Um, but they don't like to talk about the Indians in Peter Pan. When they did the Dumbo remake, there were these little additions on animal cruelty and conservation, but nothing about race, given that there was some really bad racial caricatures around the characters of the crows. Not going to address that. Just remove it. Pretend like it wasn't there. And then, of course, there's the... <laughs> there's the 300-pound gorilla in the room of this topic when it comes to Disney, and that's Song of the South. Which, despite the fact that they continue to use the song zippity doo -da around the park, or they will once the park starts to reopen again, they uh, they won't release that. Even when Disney Plus came about, and it was the perfect opportunity to not only release it, but to do so in a way that didn't feel like they were trying to capitalize or profit off of it. Because I think... I, I'm not sure this has ever been part of Disney's concern, but I think there could have been an argument made that if they actually had released a DVD, Blu-ray, what have you, of Song of the South, once it became clear that it really wasn't okay, that they were still making money off these depictions, these stereotypes, these elements. But once you put it on something like Disney+, Plus. There is kind of what it makes the money, but nobody's buying the service because of it. They buy the service for all this other stuff, and it's available should they wish to watch it. So it doesn't feel as much like you're specifically funding that or the ideas behind it. But Disney still didn't do it. It was really the best opportunity they had to stop pretending like it never happened and get it out with the cleanest possible slate, and they still wouldn't do it. And I found myself wondering why. Because, like I said, Disney is pretty good at IP management. So what's the problem? Well, 
at a guess, and the reason this is on the break room and not on Council of Geeks is because this is a half-formed thought. But I think the problem is that Disney's image is much more tied up not just with its IP, but its founder. Warner Brothers, like, if you know your film history, maybe you know the name Jack Warner. But Jack Warner isn't credited with creating the Looney Tunes. You know, Jack Warner is, you know, has no association with so many of the IP that Warner Brothers owns. And so when that IP or specific instances of it are problematic and have issues, they can talk about it basically as a piece unto itself. Whereas if Disney has a more open conversation about problematic elements that were overseen or directly created by Walt Disney himself, then that means they can't just have a conversation about that piece of work in isolation. They kind of have to have a conversation about the man who made it because his contributions aren't isolated to just these few problematic things. He was massive, and he had his hands in everything for pretty much as long as he was alive, from the parks to TV specials to the movies, the cartoons, the works. So they can't just have a little disclaimer about a specific episode of, a Mickey, of an old Mickey Mouse cartoon or Song of the South, because that opens them up to a conversation they really don't want to have. And the reason they don't want to have it is because so much of their brand's image is tied up in one man. And I feel like, on the whole, Disney has been, over the decades, slowly, very slowly, pulling back from the image of Disney himself, of Walt Disney himself, as being front and center. They haven't abandoned it, obviously, but, and maybe part of that even initially started with them starting to acquire, you know, other things that clearly Disney didn't create. You know, once Disney bought ABC and all the things associated with that, and then later bought Marvel and Pixar and... Uh, now Star Wars. Obviously, Di Walt Disney himself has no association with those. And so it becomes easier and easier to distance themselves. But to give you an idea of how tied in it used to be, Walt Disney died decades before I was born. But I knew what the man looked like. I knew what he sounded like. My grandparents had the Disney Channel uh, as part of their cable package. And I used to spend summers with them. And he, he was there. Clips of him, introductions that he gave to movies, little special behind-the-scenes things about the animations and creatings of certain things would be run as specials or like between show bumpers and things like that. I knew the man. I knew his look. I knew his voice. And he'd been dead well before I was even born. That is how tied into the brand that man is. And that is why it's so hard for them as a company to just step back and go, oh, okay, well, at one point we made this thing. We're not going to take it away. You can still watch, but let's give context. Because Disney can't just give context to the thing. They have to give context to the man. And like all human beings, Walt Disney was complicated and flawed. But a big part of the brand image was the image of him. And the image of him can't be those things. And so you have the branded image of Walt Disney conflicting with the human reality of Walt Disney. And that is a disconnect that <laughs> Disney as a company does not want to have. And I can sympathize. Because I think... In a lot of ways, the Harry Potter fandom's going through a similar thing because it all comes back to J.K. Rowling. And a lot of us are having to come to terms and come to conclusions about how much distance we can put between her 
and our love of things she's created. And that is a hard conversation. Disney just doesn't want to have it. I don't expect that to change anytime soon, but I just found it interesting to think about sort of that difference, given that Warner Brothers and Disney are companies on paper in similar situations, but handling it very differently. And I just found it interesting to think about why. So there we go. I don't even know what I'm going to call this one, but whatever your thoughts are on anything I've said, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Usual stuff. You know what it is. Like, subscribe, Patreon, comment, share this stuff. Do it. Go for it. Or don't. Don't sweat it. We take a laid back attitude. So just uh, come on back next time you need a break. <laughs>